Hi, Shannon here from houseimprovements.com and today I'm going to do this video and we're going to show you how to apply primer onto a freshly drywalled wall. It's all sanded and ready to go. We just have to put the primer on. So the items that you're going to need uh, tool-wise for, for doing this job of priming is you're going to need a metal paint tray, which is down here, a paint tray liner. Uh, the nice thing with the liner is that it keeps your tray clean, your metal tray clean, and you can throw this out when you're done. So it just simply is molded to fit in there. Uh, you're going to need a paint stir stick. You're going to need some kind of opener or bar or something to open the paint can. Uh, you're going to need a roller cage, which is this, and the roller sleeve. Uh, roller sleeve, I like to use a semi-smooth uh, nap, which is a 10 mil nap. And that's just to do with how long of fibers it's on there. That gives you a nice, nice coating of paint or primer on there. These just simply slide on there, tight like that. Uh, you're also going to need a paintbrush. Try to use a good quality paintbrush uh, suited for the type of paint or primer or whatever that you're using. And as well, if you're doing walls, it's nice to have an extendable pole that you can screw onto that roller cage. And uh, you'll see when I'm doing it, the reason for that. Uh, then uh, most importantly, you're going to need your paint or primer that you're using. Uh, we're using a primer. Uh, the, the finished color on this wall is going to be quite dark. So what I've done is had the paint company half tint the primer. So basically what they've done is taken half of the amounts of colors that would be in the finished coat and put it into the primer. Uh, just as easier to cover instead of using white primer all the time with such a dark color. You're probably easily cover it in two coats of paint then as opposed to three if it was white. Um, so yeah, that's the stuff. I'm going to get set up here and, and we'll go at it. So we always want to start out by cutting in. Cutting in is, is using your paintbrush and actually uh, taking your paint, now obviously I don't have any on here, your primer, and working into all the inside corners and edges anywhere where you're, you're up against, you know, plug-ins, lights, any of that kind of thing. So I've got my paint here in my hand. Uh, you could transfer it into a smaller container or whatever, but uh, I find it just as easy to leave it in here. You don't want to bathe your, your brush in there. You can see I've just got a quarter inch or a half inch up on there. I've dipped it, I back wiped the one edge, and now I'm ready to put it up on the wall. So I come up, I start just a little ways away from the corner and work my way in. takes a little bit of a steady hand and a little bit of practice and when you're brushing when you're just first starting out with your brush it means it isn't as smooth either until it gets loaded with a bit of paint a few times so you just want to kind of lay the bristles down so they're extending into that corner And uh, you want to you want to have a, about a brush or a brush and a width uh, and a half width out of the corner so that when you roll, uh, you know you can easily match up to it. You aren't fighting to get your roller right in that corner. I'm just coming down here. In reality, the other side of this corner is going to be the same color, but I'm just showing you, you know, if you're cutting into the ceiling or something, that you can uh, just run it down like that. Now when you're right up, I'm in a, in a three-way corner up there. I'm going to use, my, my paintbrush has got a bit of an angle on the end. It's shorter on one end, sort of shorter on one end than on the other. So I'm going to put the point here end up. I'm going to kind of use it, flatten the brush out, and manipulate it to get up in that corner. It takes a little bit of doing, a little bit of practice. Now I'm up against the ceiling there. Now I've got to do the same thing in this case. This, this is primer and it's half tinted to the wall color. And the ceiling is going to be white. So I will be priming it white and then it will get painted white. And go along like that. I'm going to get this other side. Now because it's the same color on both sides, I can actually be pretty liberal about putting that in there. Work my way away from the corner. Like 
so now I've got to work my way up into this three-way corner again. Try not to leave any big drips or ridges or anything. Smooth it down a bit. So, so you want to go around your whole room, do all your cutting in, go around the outside any plug-ins, switches, any of that, like I said, brush, brush width or brush and a half, and then I, we can get set up to do the roller. Okay, so I've gone all around and cut in the rest of this, this wall. Uh, typically, I would generally do the ceiling first, uh, so that you, because it's usually white primer, so then you don't have to cut in the white, you can, if you slop down onto the wall a bit, it doesn't matter. Uh, then when you come around to cut in your wall, you, you can cut it in actually nice and neat. Otherwise, like in this case, I've got to cut in twice now, but just for demonstration purposes here is the reason I did the wall first. Uh, so I've got my sleeve on here. When you've got a brand new sleeve, it's a good idea just to rub your hand over it a couple times. It kind of pulls out any loose fibers that might be on there. Kind of gets it conditioned there for, for paint. Now I've, I've put, poured some of my primer already in the tray down here. I'm going to go down and, and load up my roller and I'm going to start rolling in a corner. So the first few times it takes a little bit of work to get the, uh, when it's a new roller, to get a good coverage on that. So you can see I've got the, the roller fairly saturated now. I'm kind of rolling some out. I'm not really pushing down, squeezing out. I'm just letting the, the, the primer itself squeeze off the excess. So I've got the roller loaded up. Now I'm going to take it up to the wall and begin rolling from the bottom up. Kind of work your way back into the corner within, you know, about an inch or so of the corner. You're trying not to push too hard because if you push, you're just going to leave a ridge of paint coming off this end and then you have a whole bunch of ridges everywhere. Uh, I always use this end of the roller as the trailing end and uh, if anything, I'm putting, I'm applying just slightly more pressure to this corner so that it tapers out back there and doesn't leave a ridge. So don't overwork it too much, just get it on there so it's covering. I always make it consistent roll, I don't stop in the middle of the wall. And now I overlap about halfway onto there, work back onto what I just did about half the roller, and then work ahead again about a half. And it just helps feather into what you've already done. We're coming up to a plug-in here, so I'm going to start just above the roller, or above the plug-in. I'm going to go up, come down and around my plug-in. Just kind of get that worked in around the bottom of the plug. I'm trying to work full length of the wall as much as possible, not stopping in the middle. You can see we're getting nice, even, uh, full coverage. It's a lot easier to see as well when your uh, primer is half tinted like this. You can really see if you've missed a spot or anything. Always load up your roller, good and heavy. Not heavy, so heavy that it's dripping the when you're moving it from the wall, from the tray to the wall. You don't want to have a huge mess. You can see we're just gradually moving the head down the wall as I go. If you remember in the beginning of the video, I had mentioned that you may want this extension on the roller. It makes it a lot easier. You're not crouching and bending over all the time. It's pretty much completely being done with the arms. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, roll out the rest of this wall. Uh, once you've started the wall, try not to stop and start in the, in the middle of the wall for too long. You want to keep a, a wet edge or keep wet primer there. 
So I'll, I'll work great from one corner to the other uh, you know, before I change my primer or reload my primer if I can help it, just to keep my, myself moving along so you don't get a dry edge. Um, so yeah, just work your way along. You may come up with, like, you may find a little blemish in your drywall uh, patching as well. So you may have to go back and do a little touch up, but uh, usually at this point you've got things pretty good. So, um, But if you do have to, this is the time to do it before you paint. Uh, follow your primer instructions as far as how long you have to wait to paint over top of it. Um, some people have written in to our website and asked the difference between using semi-gloss or uh, a satin or an eggshell finish paint. Uh, basically the difference is uh, with the semi-gloss you're going to get a lot more flashing which means uh, you're going to see a difference uh, in the paper where you've mudded and where it hasn't been mudded on the paper with a semi-gloss. It, it does look a lot smoother where you put mud than here once you get it all painted. So the semi-gloss will show that easier, where the eggshell or the satin generally won't show that, or a flat. So the flatter the paint, the less uh, imperfections or differences in the paper texture they're going to show. Um, scrubbability now, it used to be that you wanted a semi-gloss for scrubbability, so that if you had to wipe the wall, you didn't leave a shiny spot. Uh, that's not so true anymore. A lot of the flats and the eggshells and all that have pretty good scrubbability, so uh, you, know, you can wipe them pretty good and they aren't going to leave a shiny spot like they used to. So you know a lot of people will stay, stick with an eggshell now or a satin finish. So I'm going to finish priming this up but uh, hopefully we showed you a few tips and tricks uh, for priming your walls and generally painting is the same idea. Now now you go back and you cut in, you, you'd use a roller again, roll in uh, everything you can and uh, basically painting you're probably going to, it's going to take two coats. Priming one coat is always good enough. Uh, make sure you've got the proper primer for what you're covering. Some primers are better on a brand new installation where there's others that are better when you're you know, maybe going over some patchwork or just priming an existing painted wall already. A couple other helpful hints for uh, either priming or painting is that uh, what I like to do after I do my first coat of paint is I'll use my hand sander that I use for drywalling and the real fine paper and I'll give the wall a quick sand or the ceiling a quick sand. This will knock off any lumps of uh, dust from drywall or lumps of paint that have got trapped in, in your paint and you'll get a way smoother finish on your last coat of paint. So just give it a quick once over, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. You can use a pole sander as well. Uh, again, just give the wall a quick once over. Um, and then as far as your brushes and rollers, you know, in between coats or, you know, maybe you got to stop and go and do something or whatever, you're stopping anyways, you don't want to clean your brush or roller out. Uh, latex paint, you can always slip a bag over top of the ro either the roller or the brush, wrap them up nice and tight and uh, stick it away in the fridge. It doesn't have to go in the freezer, it can stay in the fridge up to five or six days and, and you know, you pull it out and it'll be fresh as can be. So with, like with a roller, any kind of bag, a shopping bag, any kind of bag, just slip it right inside, like so. Give it a bit of a twist, set it in the refrigerator, you're good to go. Same thing with the brush, just put it right inside and uh, then, then you don't have to clean it out all the time. Okay, so that's our, that's our wrap up on uh, priming drywall. Um, we've given you a few tips and hints and hopefully this will get you through uh, your next project. Uh, you can also find more articles on our website at houseimprovements.com. Uh, you can visit our YouTube channel as well, and there's other videos on, on other topics there. And uh, yeah, that's good. Thanks for watching.